is expected by the people to use his power in ways that are for them, in inappropriate ways. They want the Messiah to come in and cast off Rome and uh, to prove that he is the king of the earth, right? And that they will be the followers and they will go out and they will reign over all the other problems and their bank accounts will be high and their families will be wealthy and well off and all their kids will go to the best schools and they'll be the head and not the tail. Finally, that's what the Messiah is going to do. And this is so ingrained in their personality, they cannot, will not see anything else. And Jesus has to start shifting them from that mentality. And so, last time we talked about how uh, he heals the man at the pool of Bethesda. And after he heals the man, because the healing was done on the Sabbath, and because he defied their traditions, they wanted to kill him. So he has to withdraw. He has to withdraw to lonely regions. Okay? But the crowds kept coming, kept following him. And this is where we find Jesus right now. Withdrawn, withdrawn. <laughs> it's a word, don't look it up. Withdrawn to a lonely region, preparing something for the people. Uh, John, the sixth chapter. Verses 1 through 14. John 6, chapter, uh, verses 1 through 14. Sometime later, after Jesus had crossed to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with the disciples. The Jewish Passover was near. When Jesus looked up and saw the great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, and I love Jesus here, uh, what shall we, uh, where shall we buy bread enough for these people to eat? Notice he focuses on bread. He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered, eight months wages would not be enough bread for each person to have even one bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and said, oh, here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how will so little go so far among so many? If you understand that question more than most, let me see, hear you say amen. How will so little go so far and feed so many? Jesus answered and said, have the people sit down. There's plenty of grass in that place, and the people sat down, about 5,000 of them. Now, it's huge. And this is just extra. I know, I know. It's like, stop giving me extra. We just want to get out and go eat. Um, you're talking about bread the whole time. We're hungry. But, but this is important extra. Uh, he had them sit down. Standing as they're listening, they're standing in anticipation of a miracle, right? They've come to see the magic show. But Jesus Christ wants them to sit because for them to sit, now they're in the position of learning. They're in the position of hearing the word he's going to give them, uh, receiving a message. So he's putting them in a position to be taught a new philosophy. Okay? He says, have them all sit down. So they all sit down. Okay? Uh, it says about 5,000 of them, uh, men. So we think there were probably close to the 15,000 when you factor in women and children and everything like that, but about um, 5,000 men. Jesus took the loaves, gave things, and distributed it to those who were seated there as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Then after they had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, and underline this in your Bible, and let nothing be wasted. Somebody say, let nothing be wasted. When they um, had done so, they filled 12 baskets with pieces of the barley loaves and that were left over by all those that had eaten. 12 baskets of pieces of the barley loaves with those that are eaten. When the people saw the miraculous signs, they began to say, Surely this man is a prophet. Jesus, knowing they intended to make him king, withdrew again to the mountaintop by himself. He had to pull away because they couldn't see what he was giving them.
If I have somebody here today who's struggling to see Jesus in their want, Jesus in their hunger, Jesus between the miracles, this message is for you. I want you to look where the miracle is pointing in the story. I want you to um, understand that you've already got what you need. And finally, I want to make sure that you don't waste the thing. First off, we look to where the miracle is pointing. It was near the Passover, the what? When the unleavened bread was eaten. Uh, the bread which pointed to him and his sacrifice. That is the point where Jesus asks, where will we find enough? It's an interesting little uh, phrase that John kind of throws in there in the story. He doesn't need to tell the people it's by the Passover. The only reason to tell the people it's during the time of the Passover is to set them up and to show them, to uh, focus them on the reason for the miracle. Okay? The Passover is when the unleavened bread would be eaten. The unleavened bread pointed to Jesus, the broken bread of life, pointed to the lamb, the slain lamb of God, whose blood would take away the sins of the world. So the people only want to see a victory, a victor king, only want to see someone who would come in and grant their needs and give them their wishes. But Jesus Christ is pointing uh, them in this miracle to see him for who he is. A God who wants to, uh, or a, a Savior who wants to connect them with their God. Wants to give their life fullness in the ways that matter, spiritually speaking. Too often, we don't see Jesus in our miracles just like those people. Don't see Jesus for who he is because we're not looking for Jesus. We're looking for a holy vending machine that we can put prayers in and get blessings out. And sometimes we treat God like a vending machine, don't we? You ever put the coins in the vending machine, press the button, and the thing goes, and the, 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 the candy don't come out like you want? Yeah, yeah, John. <laughs> He's like, oh, brother, uh, isn't that the worst feeling in the world? And so what do we do? Do we go, well, it must have been God's will, blessings unto him, and, you know, that will be for somebody else. And walk away? No. We shake the machine. We kick it. We try and stick our arm up that thing. We're pounding the glass. I want what I want now. Stupid machine. We treat God just like that. Lord, no, 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 I want this thing. And God blesses you. He blesses you. He answers your prayers. Maybe not in the way that you wanted it answered, but he answers your prayers. But because it's not what you wanted, we start grumbling and complaining. And we don't see God for who he is. We instead just see a broken vending machine. When you realize that God has already given you your miracle. Ask yourself, what does this miracle say about Jesus? What is he revealing about himself to me? Because God blesses you. And I know this is going to be hard for a lot of people in this generation to understand, but God blesses you not for you, but so that you can understand him better. So that you can understand him better. Think about the last true blessing God gave to you. Did you see God in it? Or were you too busy wondering if it fit your needs just the right way? Your miracles are there for you to understand God for who he is. For who he is. You know, sometimes I get frustrated by people like Sasha. Sorry, Sasha. You know, she prays to God for years, right? Yeah. Years for, for things to happen in her life. And it happens because I'm going to have faith, I'm going to have faith, I'm frustrated, I'm going to have faith. And, and, and usually, usually, the miracles end up being like, you know, like, okay, this is good, this is good, this is good. You know, God answered her prayer. She was, she was asking for companionship. 
And, and then you get, sometimes God will answer the prayer by, you know, giving, you know, like I've said before, someone who's, uh, you know, pale, short, and sweet, right? But like, you know, she's been praying forever, and then God sends Chris into her life. Chris, how are we going to, you know, like, like tell people God doesn't give you everything you want when you come in? Ridiculous. My point, though, is, my point, though, is, Sasha needs to understand that Chris was not for her alone. Chris is for her to understand God better. Your job that you got, that you've been praying for, for ages and ages and ages, first off, recognize that is a miracle from God, yes, but it's not for you. What is this telling you about God and God's purpose for your life and how he wants to use you and the world around you? See, the first thing I want you to understand from this miracle of the loaves and the fish is what is God trying to tell you about himself? So often we don't see God because we don't see God. John 5, 39 to 40 says this. John 5, 39 to 40 says this. You, is Jesus talking to the Pharisees and everybody else that were um, trying to see God, but only through their eyes. It says, you diligently study the scriptures. You diligently do all these religious things because you think that by understanding them, you will possess eternal life. But these are the scriptures. Read, these are the miracles. Read, these are the blessings. These are the things that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me. How many times does God bless you in the moment, and in the moment you might say, praise God, but the minute that blessing starts to fade, so is your faith, so is your confidence, so is your belief in God. The minute it starts to go away. Your life is not meant to be a continual walk on the light side. Nobody grows that way. Our life is meant to be struggled. A bit. And that's good. In order for a baby to take their first steps, they gotta fall down a lot. They gotta struggle against gravity. I remember my dad, when he wanted my, he tried to force my brother to walk because uh, I won't say which brother it was because Jason would be mad if I used his name. So uh, he was a little you know, behind some of the other kids his age walking, right? And so my dad was like, well, he's, he's not walking fast enough. I'm gonna force the issue. I hate to see him because he would just struggle up and he'd keep falling, but he'd always fall forward. So what he did was we had a driveway with a slope on it. And so he put Jason on the slope because he always fell forward and he thought that he would just walk up, you know, and, and they would teach him to walk. My mom came home and said, how did he get this huge knot on his head? And that's all, oh, he fell down. <laughs> Sometimes we deal with our faith, you know. We don't want to go through the process, so we try and force it on. Say, God, I, I, I'll, I'll take it from here. It's not happening when I want, the way I want. It's starting to fade away. But if we trust, if we trust, if we trust that in that period of time between the asking of the miracle and the granting of the miracle that God is still God and he loves us and he's doing just as much for us when we don't see him and when we don't feel him than he, as he was when we did see him and we did feel him, if we can trust in that, then we'll get to where we need to be. Get there. But we are too enamored oftentimes, like the people in Israel, with the miracles, with the tadas, right? You know? We're focused on Christ at the, um, the, the tomb. Lazarus comes forth. Tada! That's great. The blind man, he sees. Tada! That's great. The people eat. Tada! That's great. But there's a period, there's a period in between there. It's a period in between there that we don't know what's going on. And that point, we have to trust that God is God and He's on His throne. Amen? I'm calling this out to all of you who are seeing God's blessings not as God intended them. We see jobs as only a means for you to get money and not as missions. When you see kids only as means of control and not as your heritage. 
or you see spouses, simply has providers or partners and not intimate beings that God can, intended for you to walk hand in hand with through eternity. You stop seeing the blessings of God because they don't look the way you want them to look. Don't fall short. Don't fall short. If you take the time and start realizing what he's showing you, you'll see that he has always been there for you, desperate to be known by you. If you believe this, if you've experienced this, let me hear you say, I see you, Lord. I see you, Lord. Praise God. Once you start realizing that God is in this thing, realize that you've already got all you need. I love Jesus. Ask Philip, where can we find, buy enough bread for these people? You know, I can't get enough bread to feed all these people. And, you know, Philip's freaking out, right? Starts looking at what he doesn't have. We don't have enough bread. We don't have enough money to buy enough bread. We don't have enough. Okay? However, however, Andrew, Andrew, a little bit more faith. Andrew looks around and says, well, we got something, but we don't think it's enough. How can so little feel so much? But he took stock of what he had. See, the miracle was already there. You hear what I'm saying? I want you to understand this. If, uh, write this down somewhere. The miracle is already there. You just have yet to realize it yet. See, as Jesus it says, Jesus uh, asked, hey, loaves and fish, where, where do we have enough? Because he already knew what he was going to do, the Bible says. Oftentimes, God allows you to see a need in your life in order for you to start taking stock of what you have. Okay? A, a, a deficiency. Too oftentimes, we walk around just feeling great. So I got everything I need. It's a, a first world country type problems, right? This story is hard for people in our country to understand because we're like, Psh, why don't they just go to McDonald's, get themselves a Big Mac? I don't understand. It makes sense to me. And at McDonald's, go to 7-Eleven, get a slushy. Goodness. We have food everywhere, as much as we want, everything at our fingertips. And when we don't get it, we don't like it, we send it back and say, no, do it again not what I wanted. Third world countries, they don't eat for days. A loaf of bread is a feast to them. Okay? A feast to them. So Jesus asked this question so they could take stock. What do you have? When you find a need in your life, an emptiness in your life, it might be God trying to shake you and say, hey, Take stock of what you got. Take stock of what you got. You spent too much time asking and complaining and looking for what you don't have. Take stock of what you do have. And we may be like Andrew and say, all right, I've got this. I've got this, you know, little thing here. I've got this rinky-dink job. i got this relationship that doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. i got this, this, this life that just feels dreary. It just doesn't feel like enough. It doesn't feel like enough. Five loaves, two fish for 15,000 people. Is that enough, Monty? No. But Jesus asked what you got. Because here's the thing. They didn't just have five loaves and two fish. What else did they have? What else did they have? Jesus. Come on, everybody. What else did they have? Jesus. Jesus. And so if you've got Jesus in your life, you've got enough. Amen. Do I have any Christians in this place? Do you have Jesus then? Yeah. Then guess what? You got enough. Bank account can't finish off, pay off all the bills. You got enough. Love going south. You got enough. Patience running short. You've got enough. But what you got to do is first off understand, I've got enough not because of what I have in my hands, but because of what I've got in my heart. Because Jesus dwells in me. So because Jesus dwells in me, I've got enough. Do you know that Jesus was the God who spoke the world into existence? If he can create something from nothing, as long as you've got him, you've got enough. You've got enough. But here's the thing. 
Here's the thing, and this is, this is the faith part. This is the tough part when realizing you got enough in Jesus. You've got to take the rest that you have, the part that you didn't think was enough before, and truly give it to him. And let him take it from you. I imagine this boy, this, 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 this boy who was smart enough to bring some food, feeling pretty good about himself, right? He's like, man, I this Jesus is amazing. I heard he likes to talk a long time, though. I packed two loaves, or five loaves and two fish. I can have eaten all the time, all I want. It's going to be great. I'm going to be taken care of. And then Andrew comes over to him and says, hey, hey, son, the master would like to use your, uh, your, your, your bread. He said, what? He wants a loaf of my bread? Pfft. I got, I got enough? Yeah, he can take a loaf. No, 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 no. He wants all it. He wants the whole thing. But, um, but I mean, I mean, that's, what about me? See, if I, if I give it to him, then I won't have anything. See, I know. We still want it. Now you sit there and you're like, okay, yeah, we get it. He gives the loaf. But how many times have you done that? Where Jesus Christ comes to you and says, hey, I got a need. But what I'm going to need is the rest you got. But, Lord, I don't have enough. Okay? <laughs> I, I used up all my patience at work dealing with idiots all day long. And now you want me to get on the road and give you my patience there too? I don't got enough. Lord, I... I've been done been with this person half my life. I've given them all the love I can get. i got only enough love left for me and my cat, and that's it. Okay, that's all I got today, Father. And you want me to give you all I got, the last of it? Give me all you got. Give me all you got. I only got enough energy to crawl out of bed in the morning and make it to work five minutes late and you want me to give you more time? Give me all you got. And so, so, so we hear this story and we think that God takes all we got and then boom, does miracles with it. But there's a time, there's a time in between. We talked about it. we have to have that faith, right? Because I, I imagine Christ taking the loaves and start breaking them out and the boy's standing there saying, okay, 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 that's one loaf. But so I got four more. That's it's two. It's, okay, okay, okay. Now maybe can I get mine now? Where, where's mine? He keeps giving it. He keeps giving it. And there's a time, there's a time where you've given what you have to God and he seems to be breaking it up. He seems to be uh, completely taking the plans you had for what you had and completely decimating it. <laughs> like, this is not what I wanted, Lord. It's not what I wanted. What about me? And that period where it just seems to be going on and everybody else seems to be blessed by what you've given except you. You feel like that. Let me ask this question. Do I have some mothers in here? Okay, then if I have some mothers in here, you can say amen because I know you felt like that. I've given, and I've given, and I've given, and now he comes home, and he wants dinner on the table? Man, it's 2020. Make your own dinner. I've given for the kids, for the parents. You know, I say mothers. You know, not that men don't give. Men give, okay. You know, take away my man card, okay. But women have a special need, most of us, most of them, most of us. No, I'm not declaring anything. Um, women have a special need to fill, to pour out, to give. They give to their parents. They give to their kids. They give to their communities. They give and they give and they give. And sometimes it doesn't feel like there's enough left over to give. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Men and women, I promise you, if you give it first to God, there'll be enough. I want you to imagine the end of the day, the end of that day, 
And, and, and the boy has finally gotten his piece, and he's chomped on it. All that barley going down. Oh, it's all good. A little bit of fish. Oh, making a little fish fillet. Oh, a little tartar sauce on there and some cheese. It's my pastor's brain. Okay, you just see it's delicious. The best sandwich you ever had in his life. It's, oh, it's so good. Okay, finally, I got to eat. Okay, I, you sustain me a little bit. And the disciples coming over to him and say, hey, we got this for you. What's this? It's leftovers. See, when you gave what you had, you got back even more than you ever thought you could carry. I will give to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. Cast your bread upon the waters, and after many days they will return to you. God has promised these things. Do you believe him? I know you believe him in the good times. But do you believe him when the bread is being passed out to everybody else but you? Do you believe him? Hold on to that, though. That's the faith. You have enough if you have Jesus. Somebody say, I got enough. One more time. I've got enough. When he gives it back to you, he gives it back to you more than you can handle so that you can now give to others. And they ask, how did you get so much? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1.20, did I read this? It says, for all our promises in God are yes in Christ Jesus. Promises to never leave you or forsake you, they're yes. Promises to make you the head and not the tail, they're yes. Promises to give you a good measure, shaken together, pressed down and overflowing, they are yes in your lives, in your workplaces, in your marriages, they are yes. In Jesus Christ, give it to him and watch what he does with it. Finally, finally, let nothing be wasted. Let nothing be wasted. After they ate all they could, Jesus looked at them and said, now, now, don't waste any of it. What we have a tendency to do. Why do you have to tell us? Because people are selfish. We have a tendency to take what we need and then the rest of it, ah, I don't need it. He says, no, no, don't let a crumb be wasted. This was me giving to you so that you could see me. Now take it and give it to someone else. Collect it. Don't let it be wasted. He says that about bread, but what he's really saying, what he's really saying, he's really saying it about lives, about your lives. See, just like the bread that he takes and breaks and spreads out, he does that for our lives. And some of us wake up and we say, I don't got enough, I'm not enough, I'm broken, I'm just fragments. I gave you my bread, Lord, my full loaf that I want to be, full, beautiful loaf. Anybody ever see a full loaf of bread? (laughs) That's Mandy. (laughs) Every day, kind of sick of it. But it's a beautiful thing, you know? You know, like, 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 it just smells good, just a full loaf. To break it up, it feels, it feels wrong. That's not wrong. But you got to do it to eat it. And some of us want to have our whole lives be just that loaf of bread, full, fresh. And God, by the time he gets to it, we look down, it's broken, it's crumbs, it's pieces. So I got nothing left. Look at me. And Jesus Christ looks at you and says, let nothing be wasted. You may have thought you needed to be a loaf, and now you're only crumbs, but guess what? Each one of those crumbs I have a plan for. I have a purpose for, for you. But Lord, I was supposed to be this in my life. I look at my brothers and my cousins and everybody else, and they're all so much more successful than me. Let nothing be wasted. I still have a plan for the crumbs in your life. You matter. Your broken snow globes matter. Your life matters. You are a gift of God and from God. Never waste what God is doing in you, only on you. You hear what I'm saying? Miracles are meant to be shared. Shared in service, shared in your testimony. So my question to you today, church, is who have you shared your broken miracle with today? 
this week? Who will you share your next miracle with? Start making a plan. How you share it is one of the ways that people understand who Jesus is. If you're looking for a way to reveal Jesus to people in your lives, share the miracles that he's done for you. Even the small ones. Even the daily bread ones. See, it wasn't just the bread he was talking about. It was about each and every one of us. It was also about the understanding of who he was. As the broken bread of life, the Messiah who dies, he wanted to show the people, I've got a better plan for you than you thought you had for yourself. So don't waste your knowledge on chasing after what you think things should be and embrace the way I have made them for you and in you. And if you do, I will bless others through you. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says this. God is able to bless you abundantly. Somebody say abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. Every good work. Don't be happy with white bread faith. Demand barley loaf faith. How do you get white bread? Well, you take grain and you strip it of all its nutrients. All the good stuff is stripped and thrown away. And that's the lives too many Christians want to live. Oh, it's softer. It's easier to chew. Look at Wonder Bread. It's a wonder, yay! It's a wonder they call it bread. Now the good stuff, the real good stuff, the one with all the nutrition, nutritious, nu- <laughs> I think I'm having a stroke. The, all the nutri- nutrients in it, the real good bread, it's harder to eat. You are chewing it for a while, but it fills you. It's good for you. Stop accepting white bread Christianity in your lives and start living barley loaf faith today and watch what Jesus Christ can do for you. who's had a uh, conversation with my dad I know that he's on a very particular diet so um, one of the things is he can't eat bread so dad um, how do we pray give us this day our daily bread if you can't eat bread Through through Christ alone amen is his mic on In Christ alone I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross in every victory let it be said of me my source of strength my source of hope is Christ alone if you know it Sing with us. In Christ alone, I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. 
Father in heaven, thank you for being all we will ever need, but using us and our meager belongings anyway. Thank you for blessing others through our brokenness and filling us more than we ever thought imaginable. Lord, if there be anybody here today who is living between the need and the miracle who is waiting in that time lord let them know that you are as faithful in this time as you are in the others that you are still with them that you still have a plan for their lives and that you are still doing a miracle in fact this time right now is part of their miracle thank you lord for hearing this prayer continue lord to guide us we pray in jesus name all right we have just a few announcements for you uh, first is this Tuesday is a board meeting so if you were on the church board the Kanye church board we would love for you to